Right, it has been a week of ups and downs, ups and downs. Um, my boy here, uh, you don't look too bad now, yeah, but um, he's been very, very ill. Um, Jake, stay where you are. Me. Very, very ill. Um, we honestly thought we were going to lose him. He went downhill quite rapidly on uh, sort of like Tuesday stroke Wednesday, being sick, couldn't hold it in. Uh, took him down to the vet, so they gave him an injection to stop being sick. Um, come home again, uh, he wouldn't drink, wouldn't eat. Um, just came lethargic, he was sitting by the front door, which is where he normally sits when he knows I'm coming home. But, um, and then just wouldn't move, uh, just totally limp. Um, Jackie would pick him up and just lie there. She sort of slept downstairs with him and um, he just lay on her all night, didn't move. Um, and it's very, very unusual for him. You can see it's not too bad now. Very, very unusual for him to um, just lie on Jackie. Normally he'd just put his head on her lap and that lot, but to actually spend all night actually laying on her. Um, and then in the morning there was just virtually non-responsive, so I took him back down to the vets and uh, they sent done some bloods and everything like that. And uh, they came back and said um, he's showing in his bloods that he's got um, kidney disease, kidney failure, kidney disease. And we were like, you know, it just hit us like a rock. Excuse me a minute. Yeah, um, as I said, sorry about that. Um, yeah, that hit us, hit us like a rock. Um, and we thought that was it. But um, obviously they kept him down there overnight and in the morning they'd done a urine test on him. And the urine test come back showing a very severe um, urinary tract infection and uh, so they immediately put him on IV antibiotics, broad spectrum, um, taking a culture of his urinary tract to um, grow, we're waiting for the results on that to find out what bacterial infection it was. Uh, obviously IV fluids as well and um, so he was on that for sort of like 24 hours and then you know the following morning they were giving us the update and they said that he was a bit more responsive um, it, just lying down but it wanked his tail as somebody came to his cage, still not eating and then in the afternoon sort of like when we checked up on him again uh, they said that he'd eaten a little bit. So eventually after sort of like three, three and a half days um, they said we could come pick him up and we come picked him up and he was pleased to see us but uh, I mean just so weak, uh, didn't want to do anything when we got home, um, they said to take him out if we could sort of thing so I just took him across on the green and uh, sort of he was you know he just sort of like walked over there done a wee came back in um, he had a little bit of chicken to eat for tea and then um, went to bed then the following morning he woke up I carried him downstairs uh, he had a drink of water a big drink of water and then he threw up again and I'm like oh for god's sake um, you know this is it but I thought no leave it, he had a really big, big drink of water and he's on antibiotics and that lot, we're trying to get the tablets down him, just leave him, so put his harness on, took him out for a little walk round, come back, he had some chicken and rice, some vegetables, he held that down okay, and then in the afternoon, sort of like, he, he perked up a bit, he was walking around the living room, so I put him in his harness and his wheels and took him out for a bit of a walk again, come back, he had some more chicken and rice, and, um, from there he's just getting gradually stronger he's nowhere near the dog that he used to be uh, you know at the moment he's got a long way to recovery but the way he went down so fast sort of like Tuesday stroke Wednesday I mean it literally he just plummeted like a stone and they say that about dogs they go down fast and they come back just as fast so fingers crossed we've got to do some more bloods um, in a couple of weeks time uh, if he keeps improving then hopefully it is just a urinary tract infection and no kidney disease but when we do the bloods in a couple of weeks time and the, uh, he's got to do another urine sample and obviously got to wait for the culture to come back from what they've done. Um, hopefully, 
you know, fingers crossed, hand on heart, I really hope that it isn't kidney disease and, uh, you know, the old boy's still got a bit of time left in him yet, you know. It's, <laughs> thank God for kind of dog insurance, that's all I can say. Anyway, so, as you saw, he's okay. He's not brilliant, um, but he's okay, he's still with us. And, uh, like I said, he's getting stronger by the hour. Uh, by the day so yeah um, I'm only mentioning this because I sort of like I mention it privately to a few people um, you know and um, a lot of people were really concerned about him I know Bisley was concerned and uh, Bisley's owner Andy and Graham and that lot they were quite concerned so just putting it out there sort of like to say you know he, Unky Dory he's on the road to recovery touch wood and um you know and this is it we're not going to have a relapse but only time will tell it's just one of them ongoing things so you know anyway on a brighter note um ponding yeah we've done a lot of stuff did you see the koi tubers fest yeah i was supposed to have gone to that but because of jakey being down the way he was uh i didn't go uh, the boy come more important but yeah if you haven't seen the koi tubers fest uh just <laughs> where you been uh, virtually almost every koi tuber um, around that we watch is uh, down at uh, Twisted Towers with Vince having a barbecue, uh, a few beers, a few gins, a few Jack Daniels, whatever you wanted. Good old knit and that on the knees up. Really missed it, guys. Really wish I could have been there. Um, but like I say, Jakey came first. Anyway, so it's that time again. Every three months having to do the do the old uh, filters in the three stage chlorinator definitely thinking of getting myself a big blue or uh, a medium blue i suppose so i don't want the great big giant one and probably want the one about like that around about low size i think um just for space uh and i may even sort of like put another three stage on as well so i have sort of like a stitch six stage because i'm looking at my water report uh, online you can do sort of go online and see the report water report for your specific little area uh, quite a few metals coppers and zincs and things like that in the water there so I'm thinking of putting a sort of like another three stage on in front of that and getting the specialist uh, heavy metals uh, filters and sort of like try and take them out because like I said this you know the at Surrey and um, the Tancho Shoa and uh, you know the white fish you, you, they are quite veiny still and like I said all the other water parameters are absolutely spot on uh, I've got you know on the Hannah meters my ammonia is sort of minuscule nitrites are minuscule nitrate okay straight out of the tap I'm running 40 parts per million straight out of the tap so I'm always going to have um, a trace of nitrate but the shower deals with it quite well so got so got a bit of nitrate but everything's fine um no parasites on the fish you know they're not behaving misbehaving they're not sulking and you know they're eating for england so um the only thing i can think it possibly might be is the metals in the water either that or they're just permanently veiny so <laughs> who knows but anyway so the little um little ice show us doing well and uh going to show you that in a minute um do a bit of underwater footage see if we can see him up by the feeding hole if we can't then i'll put the camera down and have a little look at the ice of shower but apart from that like i said um not been a lot going on on the pond here uh this week uh, just mainly because uh been looking after jake but um i will be starting preparations for um the tower uh, for the for the drum five weeks hopefully it'll be here uh, so I'm going to have to start thinking about getting the Nexus out of the hole um, and doing that, converting that to pump fed and having that pump fed running ready to drop the Nexus, uh, the uh, drum filter in uh, obviously I have to do pipe work changes hopefully I won't have to uh, um, drop the water all the way um, it's just because my slide valve's leaking but um, you know fingers crossed I won't have to do that um, I managed to pick up something in preparation because the way I got the pipe work coming from the bottom drain um, I've, the joints are very close together so 
you know, the angles and everything like that. So what I'm going to have to do is actually cut and there won't be no pipe work to connect onto. So I've got myself a boot actually from B&Q of all places, a boot that actually fits onto um, a joint, a union or whatever you call them, uh, a union and it actually slides over the that perfect and then the other end converts down onto the four inch pipe, absolutely perfect. Uh, nice in the um, waste pipe area in B&Q's if anybody sort of like looking for anything like that. And damn sight cheaper than what you get them from the koi shops. Um, half, half the price I think it was. I was looking at one online, same same sort of, same principle, same sizing and that uh, from a koi dealer. And I think they were looking it's about 38 quid, 16 quid B&Q. <laughs> just while I'm uh, waiting for the filters to clean oh, I can't get off now so this is um, the piece I'm on about like I said so for example I took this down actually just um, when I went to just check it fit so so say that's like a union or a joint so it's either a bend 45 90 whatever bend they're all about the same thickness on pressure, excuse me, just had some curry pass on its loop on a standard four inch pipe. So that fits on there, perfect. Yeah, and then I've tightened it up on the, the four inch side, needs loosening off, but basically, again, that fits on there, perfect as well. Absolutely perfect, and like I said, 16 quid from B&Q. Uh, made by Flowplast. So, they seem pretty well made. Hopefully they won't perish too much. So, well, I mean, they're not gonna be in sunlight, so they shouldn't do. So, yeah, bit of a bit of a handy tip, that, if you're thinking of changing pipe work and you um, can't get in and cut it out, or if you cut off it, you've got to cut it off flush to the joint. That's what you want, one of them. Brave bits of kit. And one thing I have noticed, there's the ISO show I just seen, but one thing I've noticed since I've been using this um, FD build-up is that uh, it's definitely putting a tinge in the water. Definitely putting a tinge in the water. Uh, I can't think what else it can be. Um, I'll turn the UV on now, um, thinking it might have been something like that, but that's been on for a week and it's not really clearing. I mean, it's not dirty water, it's just that there's a sort of like a, like a tinge to it. Everybody's gone around, there's me, uh, Alan Barnick around the show. But they're all looking food again, I literally just fed him. He's getting quite big now, so I'm uh, quite, quite pleased with the growth on that now. It was a bit slow to start with, but now he's taking off. And he's probably 40, 45 cm now. But, as to the, uh, Ice a shower. He ain't gonna come up now, not with the big boys about. Let's give him a bit of food. There he is, right down there. So I'll put the underwater camera in a minute. The thing, I think they were fed less than five minutes ago. taking the food from the top and that's why I went to the sink in so the uh, smaller ones ain't gonna get battered about and they can go down and uh, have a bit down the bottom there and Chad always up He's putting some weight on, I'll tell you that. And he's getting a right chunky monkey. So, I don't know whether you can sort of see the tinge in the water. It's not crystal clear like it's supposed to be. 
And I do think it's only been since I've been using the FD. So I do think it's sort of like it's putting a colour into the water. I may be wrong. It may be something else, but that's the only thing I can put it down to. You can see the ice is showing right down the bottom. I don't think it's going to show up. Uh, I'll get the underwater camera out. So Dan's down we go. Um, we're going to do some diving. She scared them off for a change. Well, I'll say that. Yeah, two, three usual suspects waiting around underneath. A Chad. He's getting really big. And there's me, Adam Byer, growing show. That's uh, starting to put on some size at last. And there it is. There's me, Ita Shower. I'm really hoping that it turn out to be quite a decent fish. Looking at it, it's put on some size already. Uh, just looking around just having a look around the bottom drain there the blanket weed seems to be dying off good good there's patch don't know whether we're going to see but on the other side there he's got a bit of a discoloured scale and like i said i might have to get him out to have a look at that and there's the ice shower again it is really nice looking little fish and but the thing is with showers they change so much as they grow and is that, there's that little, do you see that back there on his uh, back? I think it's a dead scale. Uh, may have to come out uh, once the cover's come off and uh, I'll have to get him out and take it out. And there's uh, my Hyatt Surrey, that's up for grabs. There's me uh, Platinum Ogon, that's going. And there, that other little Karaku just on the bottom left there, that's going as well, that's up for grabs. Um, like I said, there's a few people who said that they're interested in a couple of fish, so um, just confirm with me if you're wanting them. Uh, you'll have to come down and collect. Obviously, I can't post. So that's the Surrey. Hi, Surrey. Thing is, once the camera's under the water, I've got no control really over what I'm seeing. Obi. Yes, hello Patch. Uh, couldn't see Amanda just going past. That's the that's the one that's in the growing show and the one underneath is the one that's up for grabs. The Kahaku there. And the platinum ogon, like I said, that's up for grabs. That's not one of my favourite fishes. I wouldn't mind another one of them, but I've got to make some room. So there's two of them. But everybody seems to be happy, healthy and well. Like I said, it's just the uh, veins up on the, um, the sort of like the mainly white bodied ones. The veins up and I can't for the life of me work out why. I mean, it could be hormones again. Uh, as Paul Reynolds did say sort of different times of the years, uh, different times of the year, um, the hormones change. And obviously uh, with the weather starting to warm up now and me knocking the heating up a little bit, to bring it up to sort of summer temperatures slowly. Um, yeah, I suppose they'll be thinking about spawning so they may be going through hormonal changes for spawning so don't necessarily panic when you see your fish all pink and veiny um, it may just be a natural reaction but the finds are looking better than what they did which uh, may be something to do with killing, trying to kill off the blanket weed there's Weird's Raven Spotters, that's the first time I've seen her, I think. Really hope the Sumi on that one comes out a bit more. A bit thicker, a bit inkier. I mean, cracking fish otherwise. If that comes through really dark, uh, that, that will be an absolute cracking fish. Comes through like that, nice and inky like that, or that. Yes, Chad, get out of the way. You see, it's, it's still a bit pale, as a lot of uh, lot of shows can be. So that's, that's the grown show. And there's Raven again. Yeah, I've got no complaints. Um, uh, you know, I do think heating in winter do keep your fish a bit healthier. But yeah, everybody's looking good. I'm trying to see on the bottom, but I 
obviously with the covers on you don't get much light in unfortunately it's like staring into the abyss boom, 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 boom. cracking higher surrey really just a uh, shame that it's a bit dirty yellow mate and there it is again oh and there it goes again so yeah so you've managed to see the um, ISA show up at least anyway so back to the real world We go a week on, you can see he's, uh, <laughs> he's getting stronger. Dogs recover so much faster than what we do. Bless him. Happy days. So, as you can see, Jake's making a fantastic recovery. Um, all the people who sort of who was in the know, um, obviously, uh, this video sort of like last week I didn't put a video out not really a lot going on at the moment so just doing bits and pieces so this is a week on and uh, as you just saw by that clip he's making you know fantastic recovery and just fingers crossed that when we go back down for his blood tests which will be next week now um, that everything comes back clear and there is no um, long-term kidney damage or any kidney disease or anything like that so yeah fingers crossed now I um, you know I was doing the uh, energy saving and uh, I put the timer the um, on the bottom drain air and I went out and bought one of them uh, timers the uh, mechanical ones not the uh, digital ones because they don't tend to fare too well outside I committed a bit of a faux pas there because I didn't need to buy one of them because I got a Matsuku box with a timer. <laughs> yes. So I forgot all about that. When when I brought the box, uh, that was the only one available. The box standard one weren't there. Didn't want pump guard because I don't know how pump guard works with very pumps. Anybody out there who's got a, a pump guard Matsuku box with a very pump, let me know how it gets on. Because obviously you can alter your... your how much you're using on your very pump and um, that might tell the Matsuko something wrong that's my opinion that's what I'm thinking anyway uh, but yes so I didn't want that and the only one available at the time was the um, Matsuko box with a uh, timer <laughs> yeah so setting up the timer um, I'm also gonna put the um, UV on timer as well doesn't need to be on 24 hours a day seven days a week so I'm just going to have that come on during daylight hours. Um, again, same as the air pump. Obviously, the air pump for the bottom drain, come summer when it's warmer, heat goes up to 24, 25. That may need to be on um, all day, but obviously I can change that. But it's just little little things like this that can help with your energy bills. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, shan't go there. Yeah what they tried to bill me, uh, what they tried to put my monthly payment up to. We will not go there, but basically they did have a phone call saying, yeah, no way, Jose, uh, not doing that, not paying that much. I don't care. So, yeah. Right, so I'm going to go play with the timer. I'm going to take you over there and show you what I'm doing. So, as you can see, switch box and timer. Oh. Right, so what you need to do, uh, let's come out of that a minute, right, so you need to go to the menu button at the top here, press that, and then you've got all your pumps names, so air pump one, so UV I've done, uh, I was just playing around with that, so just the arrows, go to air pump one, which I believe it is, press that, and then you come up, air pump one. Uh, yeah, so keep that, sorry. Um, 
and then press the circle again. Um, I think you need to press square. No. Then I come one. Press the circle. No. Uh, ah, well, B. All right, no. All right, so we'll put it. Done that. A, B, F. So you can see that you see got um, set it for five different times. A, B, C, D, E. Um, so you can have five different time settings on each line, uh, which is handy to have. So I went to B, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to set, so tip that, go to circle again. So um, air pump I've got coming on at, I'll put it on at seven o'clock in the morning. So you just use your arrows up here. So zero seven, press the circle again. 100. So that's what time it should come on and then I'm going to have it going off at 8 o'clock at night yeah 8 o'clock at night so keep on going up to 2000 and zero job done and so 0700 to 2000. That's that, tipped. And that should return back to the menu. So what we need to do is check that later on to make sure it's gone off. Uh, the UV is going off for uh, comes on at 8 o'clock in the morning and goes off at 8 o'clock at night so we need to come out again at 8 o'clock tonight have a little look make sure it's all gone off but yeah totally and utterly forgot all about that so this timer that I've got just there that timer can come out and I'll put the plug in straight back into the plug socket um, I nearly did buy the new one with the quick thick fittings but um, because I knew there was a timer, I didn't realise I had the timer box. Just completing that uh, um, moment, senior moment for me. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so as time goes on, I might play around with other stuff. Um, what have I got? Pump UV, air pump one, which is for my moving bed. No, uh, air pump one, which is my bottom drain. Air pump two is my moving bed. So that needs to stay on all the time. Um, light ones off anyway that was for the Senai but I've turned that off because it's a piece of rubbish anyway right catch you in a minute they're just giving the filters a clean and you can see it's extremely mucky uh, I've got a lot of food going in still uh, starting to put a bit more in now the warm oil is coming uh, I'm up to 18 degrees at the moment. Uh, shan't be for much longer though, because of obviously the cost. Uh, and like I said, I think I'm going to follow suit this year and uh, just heat in the summer um, after watching Ricky, Ricky stuff up. Um, I'm going to heat just in the summer, get the growth, and then in winter, uh, probably knock it down to. I don't know, 9 degrees, 10 degrees maybe, uh, give them a bit of a winter, uh, might even drop it down to 8, um, not sure yet, just see sort of what sort of winter we're going to have really, um, just keep it nice and stable, uh, don't let it get too cold, uh, I hope you save a few pennies on the heating, but yeah, I need to go get, go get the Hoover, um, still can't take this out in ready and in preparation for the um, the drum coming yet because it's well the last two last two nights we've had quite a heavy frost. Woke up in the morning and all the grass was green and frost on the roofs and everything like that. So it's still just too cold to actually start uh, thinking about pulling the nexus out of the hole and uh, plonk it possibly just over there by the water barrels and have it pump fed um okay, we'll stick around there. so uh that's not going to happen but anyway get on give these filters a clean and uh 
I'll catch you people in a minute. So this bit's just for uh, Terry, or Righty, as a lot of you know him. Um, he brought some ferns, and he said you don't need, you know a lot about ferns. Um, ferns, some ferns are evergreen, like this one here, Terry. That's evergreen, so that'll have leaves all year round. Um, tree ferns, believe it or not, that is a tree fern, but it's an extreme baby. They lose their leaves in winter, and then you cover them up and they uh, spring, uh, they sprout again, sort of like uh, in spring. Um, now the one you said there that didn't have any leaves, if you can see that one there, see that's a non-evergreen fern, and it's just coming up, as you can see now. So that one you got in the pot ain't got a lot on in it. Um, like I said, that will come back to life. And then, Again, you get ones like this where they've got livery leaves. That's actually a fern. It stays evergreen, but the leaves start to go a bit tatty in spring. And uh, if you can see down in there, you've got the new throngs just coming up there for um, for the uh, for this year. And these are these are slowly die back and let the new ones come up. And the plant gets even bigger. And again, there's another. tree fern there you can just see all the throngs starting to uncurl on this one there so yeah not to worry Terry they'll be they'll be okay well, just to show you you can't I don't know what you can see in there but the two blue lights at the bottom there uh, so the UV's off and the uh, air pump at the bottom drains off Change the timings a little bit. Um, got the uh, air pump for the bottom drain coming on at four o'clock in the morning now, um, and going off at seven o'clock at night. So it's still saving me money on an energy. But yeah, time is working. So that's it for this week. Um, I apologise, like I said, the bit at the beginning with Jake sort of thing. I just thought. Uh, people out there who knew he was ill just wanted to see him so I put that on and explained what had happened because uh, quite a few people knew he hadn't been well so um, yeah still sort of like got the covers on winter time temperatures are starting to come up so I'm saying probably about two weeks for the covers to come off um, but in the meantime uh, well by the time this goes out um, I would have been on Pond and Garden uh, live chat um, if you've not seen that get over and see Gary on Pond and Garden um, and the live chats are being run very very well uh, it's very enjoyable and some good points being made from all sorts of people fellow YouTubers and um, hobbyists alike so yeah pop over have a cross uh, uh, join the group there and get in on the live chats when we have him run them on Saturday nights and on Tuesday nights but anyway, I'm going to say tatty bye. Uh, hope you enjoy yourself. Have a good Easter. Uh, hope you get plenty done. I'm not. I'm going all the way up to uh, North Yorkshire. Uh, go see um, my oldest and my grandkiddies. If I can find fuel, that is. Bloody protesters. Yeah. All right, people. Look after yourselves. Have a great Easter. Don't eat too much chocolate. And remember... It isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. See you soon. Bye.